Hi guys, how's it going? This is the new Grand Creta, so I'm gonna show you around it. Let's start at the front. I'm not such a fan of the front because of the lights, you see. They have, they sort of, they look like tail lights to me, but it looks okay. I like the chrome on the grill and I like the clamshell bonnet. It's like a Range Rover. And then we move on to the side. You've got 18 inch wheels, but there is a lot of travel, so shouldn't ruin the ride. Move on to the side here. Got indicators there. This crease that goes like that. We go around to the back. Nothing special really. The lights are sort of regular. I don't like how it says Grand there. I would rather have it below the Hyundai badge here. So it doesn't look quite symmetrical to me. But anyway, overall it's a nice looking car, but not everyone is going to like it. And especially with that front end, it's not going to appeal to everybody. Ugh. This is a high spec one, but with the two litre. It looks about the same as the other one, really. <laughs> so I'm not going to go too into detail. But this one does have more extras than this one. But this has a party trick, you see. If we open here, <coughs> you've got seats at the back here and they fold down i'll show you now let's just put this armrest up and then we fold well we recline them a bit and then i can put this down if i like like that and then now you've got lots of space and if somehow that's not enough space for you if it isn't then i don't know what is and then now it's not a grand critter it's a van critter Look at all that, got lots of space and it is quite tall so you can fit boxes. So if you work for Amazon or a company like that, you can put lots of boxes in this. So that's good. You can recline these third row seats. We'll put them like that. This lever is a bit heavy. It would be nice if the seats were assisted a bit. And you still got some space. You can fit some suitcases in here because it's tall as well. I say you could get uh, four suitcases in the back here because it's still a lot of space. All right, so we'll shut the boot now. I fit nicely in the back here too. Look at how much headroom I have. And you've got this panoramic sunroof. Leg room's okay, but this picnic table doesn't exactly help. However, it's good if you want to have lunch. And it's sort of assisted, so when you put your plate here, it won't fall. Because you see, when I was young, my dad had a, a Nissan Note. And the, the picnic tables were so flimsy that I once put my Happy Meal or whatever I had here. And it just went all, on, all onto this floor here. Because the thing was so flimsy. But this is very solid. So we'll put that back. And then we'll go to the third row. Let's compare it to this one. The little, not the little spec, the lower spec. Now, as you see, you don't have the fancy uh, ambient lighting or anything like that. And the door handles aren't chrome. They're this plastic. But I actually prefer this one. It's a bit more humble. It tells the world that you don't really care so much about the fanciest features and that you just want to car for your family and thing is if you have lots of features on a family car your kids are going to break them and stuff so i'd rather have the lower spec one because i just like lower spec cars the leg room is a bit more because there's no large picnic table and the headroom is more because this one doesn't have a sunroof either so the headroom is better with no sunroof because there's the mechanisms and all that so there should be more space in the back as well so let's compare the two and the third row let me just get the seats going and then we'll compare the two to see which one is better this is clever i like how that sticks this that's clever right we'll just put that back to the same as the other one so we can compare fairly we just fold the seat like that. It's one method. You don't have to pull various levers. 
like on my uncle's discovery. Right, so we'll put that back. Um, of course, the seat is quite back, so my legroom isn't great, so we'll put it forward a bit. There you go. And it's decent back here. I've got some headroom. If I was six foot tall or something, probably not. But legroom isn't great, however. But the headroom is adequate. And of course, you're only going to fit little kids back here. I mean, my baby brother could fit in my back here easily. But um, I, I wouldn't really be comfortable back here on a long journey. A trip to the shops, yes. But for a long journey, honestly, you're better off with a bigger car like the Palisade that I reviewed. Uh, but at least you do have cup holders in the back and headrests and decent enough seats. You've got USBs and here you can control the speed of the temperature. But why not put it there, you know? It's not fair for people who like to sit there. It's not fair. Watch this. Like that. Ta-da! Here we are. So let's get out. Right, let's check the higher spec one out. Right. Here we are. Oops. This seat is a bit heavier for some reason. Hmm. Right. Snuggle up. Now, hilariously enough, it actually feels a bit more spacious than this one, even though there's a mechanism for the sunroof and you've got lights back here. I don't think the other one had lights, but it actually feels a lot more spacious than this one, funnily enough. I wasn't expecting that. I've got a bit more headroom, weirdly, but legroom's about the same. So I never thought I'd say this, but if you want more room, go for the higher spec one. Of course, in the second row, with that massive sunroof, you're not going to have as much room in the second row as opposed to the one with no roof. Well, no sunroof. Imagine having no roof. And you've also got an armrest here, but no cup holders, funnily enough. Where did you put the cup holders? These are for bottles, so come on, Hyundai, where are the cup holders? Are they here, maybe? Let's see. No, come on, guys, what happened with the cup holders? You've got a USB charging thing and the air vents here. You've got air vents. You also get sun blinds for the, well, for the sun, obviously. Right, let's go to the front. You've got keyless entry on this one, keyless go. I'm not sure if the other one has. Um, um, it's overall, it's a nice interior. You've got this display here. However, I don't like this cheap plastic here and there's also other cheap plastics the plastics could be a bit more premium considering this is a half a million rand car um but it, it's nice enough it's just <clears throat> i would like some piano black here or some aluminium like this they could have put aluminium there this was a complaint i had with the pre-facelift creta that i reviewed but the rest of it is nice you've got the screen here can we turn it on no we can't but it's about a hindi screen really it's what you'd expect from them and you've got a sunglasses holder here of course with this one you've got the sunroof you've got the lights here which are leds i didn't actually know that they're leds um you've got the mirror here hello and then I don't know what that does. You've got more ambient lighting in this rather swish purple color. I do like it. It is rather swish, um, rather suave, shall we say. And you get it in the back as well. Um, that is quite nice. You also have electric seats here. You've also got your cooled seats, but you don't have heated seats. But like the salesman said, this is South Africa. Do you really need heated seats? But you do have two cold seats, this auto holds thing, and you've got an electric parking brake. Now, I hate electric parking brakes, but this one is okay because you've got an automatic gearbox. So when you put it in park, you basically don't need a handbrake. So with an automatic car, an electric parking brake actually makes a whole lot of sense. 
but I wouldn't have it on a manual car. You've got the cameras, but you've got to be in drive for the camera to work. You've also got cup holders, but not in the back. This is for your wireless charging, so your phone doesn't go about. You've got your aux, the USB, and you've got the stop button. You've got the stop button there. I don't like that. I'd rather have the stop button over there because you can't really see it, you know? It's all the way down here. No dual zone climate control, unfortunately. That's a deal breaker. You've got to have dual zone climate control. Right, so we're going in the lower spec one. You don't get chrome on the door handles, that's the first thing. And you don't get electric seats either. Oh, boo hoo hoo, right? Who needs electric seats? You don't get the sunroof, you just get a plain old halogen headlights. No driving modes, no nonsense. You get an old fashioned handbrake which you can yank up, I like that. Um, a steering wheel is less fancy. No driving modes, as I say. And you don't have automatic climate control. And you only get a, a smaller digital display. The other one had a bigger digital display. But other than that, there's not much difference really. It doesn't feel any cheaper. It just has less bits on it. You get the same gear shifter. However, the high spec one, it did have a bigger center console, whereas this one is smaller. It's more traditional creature. And there's no ambient lighting. It's just a car, really. But um, hey, it's fine for ferrying your family around. And who needs a drive mode anyway? Now, under the bonnet of this one is a 1.5 litre diesel. That other one there had a 2 litre. But I would have the diesel. Now, of course, you can get the diesel in that spec. And you can get the petrol in this spec. It's vice versa, really. At least you get the automatic lights in this one. That's what the other one had. Let's see if we can get the lights going in this one. See what they look like. There's your LED indicators there. And here is your LED daytime running lights. You've got your hazards there. This is what the LEDs look like. Let's turn on the proper lights. So you've got three lights there. But the LEDs do look quite nice. They look better in this darker color. So let's turn the lights off. So should you buy a Grand Creta? Well, I think you should, yes. It might be a bit expensive for a Creta to half a million. You can get the Cherry for cheaper, but the Cherry won't last as long as this. So you got to realize that as well. And also do realize it does have a lot of features. You've got the digital driver's display, the touch screen. And even if you get the lower spec version, you still get a lot of spec for a mid spec variant. So it's not a bad car. I would go for a diesel top spec one like this. But if you have kids that are rough and tumble like my cousins, um, get that one because they're going to fiddle around and break with all this stuff. But it's a good car, the Creta. Grand Creta, sorry. Granddad. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye.